welcome to tonight's episode of Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel, and I have yet another special guest with me, Bishop Wesley Knight of the New Creation Christian Church right here in Brooklyn. He'll be with us for the next 30 minutes, so stay with us. You're watching Beyond Focus Beyond TV. Beyond Focus TV allows you to discuss contemporary topics affecting the Caribbean people on both the national and local level. The show features informed guests who offer insight, debate, and evaluate various issues. Beyond Focus TV builds on the station's mission to provide useful information to the Caribbean people in New York and abroad. Beyond Focus TV, where our viewing audience can get educated, informed, and empowered. Hi, my name is Stephanie Miles, and I am Miss Caribbean United States 2013, and you're watching Beyond Focus TV. Welcome back. I'm your host, Lydia Patel, and you're watching Beyond Focus TV. And my guest for the evening is none other than Bishop Wesley Knight, who's back again for the second time here. Definitely no stranger to Beyond Focus TV from the New Christian Cultural Church. So tell us what's going on with you. How is it that you're back again? You're doing so many different things. Let's get to it. Well, first of all, I want to tell you thank you for having us back again. We're just excited what the Lord is doing in this season. Um, it's just exciting to see how he's unfolding his plan for mm -hmm. my life and for the life of the, the, the ministry. So Absolutely. We're and, you know, I want to mm -hmm. let everyone know this has been a process for Bishop Knight. Um, he didn't just wake up and decided to be a bishop and take on God. So let's talk about your road yes. to God. How you really got to this point here today? Well, uh, it, it started uh, growing up in a Christian home. My mother was an evangelist for years, and uh, of course we had to deal with the embarrassment of Friday night when the door would fly open and mother would come to the door and, it's time to go to church. And uh, so I grew up in a Christian home. I grew up in a Christian home. I grew up in uh, Bedford-Stuyvesant, Brooklyn, uh, all of my life. And, uh, and that's the road. My, my, my roots start with a Christian home. Absolutely, and would you say that gave you the foundations for where you are today? Yes, it, yes it is. It, it, it built the foundation. Uh, a lot of the principles and things that I stand on now in life was instilled in me early in life. Very yes. good. So looking back at from where you are now to where you came from, you had little stints, things went bad. Tell us about that. Tell us about that rocky road a little bit. Well, I think at the age, during my teenage years, I began to do what all teenagers do. I, I rebelled, you know. I didn't want to go to church. I didn't, you know, all of my friends was doing their thing. Uh, during my teens, it was during the time of the 80s, during a major shift in Brooklyn. You know, there was a crack era, and, mm -hmm. and my friends chose to take roles to make money selling uh, crack and drugs. And, and, you know, I just wanted to just experience another part of life. I never went that far, but I wanted to, you know, know what life was outside of the struggle. And, um, you know, I began to make decisions that wasn't favorable. And uh, one thing led to another. And until I got to a place where I had to make a decision that it was the life that I was living or God. And I chose God. And would you say it's a calling? We always hear that you know, people are called to God. Describe that moment when you really had that moment when it was just you and the Lord and you decided, like you said, you were to choose God. You were at a crossroad. You had a decision to make. How was that for you? Uh, it, was, it, was a, it was very challenging because I enjoyed where I was, but I knew I had to get out of there. I had to leave from that type of life. I couldn't stay in that anymore. I, I seen friends die in the mm. street. I seen uh, things just happen in my community. I see families destroyed. And I knew that I did not want this for my family. I didn't want this. I knew, I didn't know what life had to offer, but I knew it had to be something better than what I was experiencing. Absolutely. And you decided to choose the Lord, and then let's fast forward a little bit. You created NCCC. So why don't you let us know actually what that stands for? It's your project. It's your baby. And we're going to really get a whole spectrum on that, but tell us about it. Well, uh, NCCC is the New Creation Christian Church. Um, it was uh, birthed in the year of 2000. 
Um, so we're celebrated. We just we're get ready to celebrate 14 years of ministry. Um, it was during a transitional period in my life, and uh, I began to read more and pray more. And I came across the scriptures, 2 Corinthians 5.17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. He's a new creation. And the scripture just grabbed me. And, uh, and so about three or four years prior to that, this was three or four years prior to that, the scripture just grabbed me. And I knew that, that something inside of me was trying to get out. Really, the reality is there was another person inside of me trying to get out of this person who was trapped in this old nature, this old behavior. And uh, four years after that, uh, when my pastor transitioned to glory, uh, the Lord birthed the New Creation Christian Church. And uh, our theme scripture is uh, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. So 14 years ago, you got that vision to really go ahead and create that. Now, NCCC is not at the location it was now. Tell us about the original location. How many members when it first started? The original church started on a Wednesday night in the basement of my house. I knew it would be an interesting story. <laughs> That's why I asked you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, you know, they, someone once said that every good church started in somebody's living room. You know, we have the upper room, which was somebody's living room. And it was in the basement. of We had 14 members. Um, not a very large space. And uh, we often teased and laughed about it because we kind of blasted our way out of there. It was so loud down there. I mean, we had the drums, the keyboard, the PA system. And uh, the Lord spoke to me and said to me, he says, You'll be moving out of the basement in three to five or three to six months. I began to look for a place before then because it was just too tight. Nothing would open. It was mm -hmm. in the fifth month that we moved out of my basement into the location that we occupied for 10 years until the Lord moved us to our present location, which we've now been there for four years. Wow. Do you actually remember offhand? Describe to us the moment when you actually did that first ministry in that basement that night with just 14 people there were you looking at 14 people sitting there and like am i doing the right thing there were there ever moments where you decided do i even want to continue doing this because it's hard it's hard to start a church it's hard to get the word out there and gain members and gain confidence because people really have to be confided in you to really want to come and share that spiritual connection well uh the bible said to make your election and your calling sure I didn't know that I was called into the area of ministry. It was my pastor who directed me. It was during the time that me and my wife was engaged, and he said to me, he said, I always knew that she would marry a preacher. He said, and I know you're him. He said, but you have to work on your ministry and allow God to work on you. And so the first time that we set to launch ministry, ministry was in me. I, I, I knew that this is, I didn't know how it would come to pass. I didn't know the path that it would take, but I knew that this is this is a calling. This was something that God was calling me to. And so I just embraced it. But it was very exciting. It was very exciting. It was very scary, but very exciting. I, I was going to say, it, it seems <laughs> like it was a, a scary moment because right. it's something big that you're embarking on. Right. And you're not sure if you're doing the right thing, but you want to continue doing it. Right. Well, one of the things about leadership that's very important is this, that, that, that you have to have a vision. And you have to know that where you're starting is not where you're going to stay. And where you are is a whole lot bigger than where you we are. Were. Yeah. And I always told the church that we are a big church in a little location. Very good. I so love it. So we're not defined by where we are. And you can't confine us by the way you define us. So. We'll hold that thought. Yes. We'll be right back here watching a very big special right here because it's Beyond Focus TV with Bishop Leslie Knight.
Sun Focus TV presents its third annual Father's Day Gala at the prestigious Crystal Manor, 1460 Flatbush Avenue in Brooklyn, Sunday, June 15th at 6 p.m. It's going to be a night to remember with live performances by vocalist Shamira Mighty, Monvolino Alexis, and music by DJ Duver. Our honorees for the evening include Nancy Miller, Executive Director and CEO of Visions VCB, Lisa Escalese, President and CEO of Inventing A to Z, Dr. Melanie Samuels, Executive Director of the bed Campaign Against Hunger, Lambert Janit, CEO of Dramcam Productions, Farah Louis, community activist and publicist, Marie Yulene Seb, fire starter and CEO of C2C, Robert Saran, VP of Kodak Po. Our keynote speaker for the evening will be none other than Ruben Durancey and hosted by yours truly, Lydia Patel of Beyond Focus TV. It's a five-course meal, open bar with valet parking. Come out and support this evening of elegance and class and support our Father of the Year. For more information, call 917-873-3996 or email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. It's the third annual Beyond Focus TV Father's Day Gala at 6 p.m. Sponsored by Beyond Focus TV. Happy Father's Day. Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm your host, Lydia Patel, and I've got Bishop Wesley Knight with us for the next half hour, giving us a lot of great details, talking about his church, giving us background information. And Bishop, before we left off for the break, we're talking about your calling. You grew the church. You knew you got ministered that in about three to six months, you'll be out of there. You started looking yes. for a new spot. And the wheels just kept on turning. So how were you really promoting and getting new members? Uh, well, one one way to promote getting new members is to have members who are compassionate about other people. Um, you know, the Bible says, so let your light shine before men that they may see your good work. Um, the Bible says some plant, some water, but God gives the increase. We have to understand that we have been afforded the wonderful opportunity to work with God mm -hmm. to help change people's lives. And one key element is love. You have to love people. You can't do ministry if you don't love people. You have to love them. You really do. And something that's definitely coming up soon, I really want to get all the details about it, is the New Kingdom Conference that's coming up this summer. So definitely mark your calendars. Let's elaborate on that because our viewers are definitely want to know how they get, get involved, the information. Tell us about it. Well, we have a fellowship of churches here in the city, 19 churches here in the city. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, we, which runs parallel with the birthing of New Creation Christian Church. And uh, it started with my bishop coming up just to instruct my secondary leadership on what their responsibility was to me and my wife as local pastors in the city. And um, when the word got out, so many pastors came that we had to move it from the basement mm -hmm. to the community center. And uh, each year it just growed and growed and other churches began to partner with us. And so it is the New York City CCFM Leadership Alliance Kingdom Conference. And uh, this year's theme is run after it. Run I after saw it. that. Yeah. yeah, run after it. Um, what, it. What is so amazing about the theme this year is, you know, in the book of Habakkuk, Habakkuk is challenged. You know, his name means to embrace or to wrestle. But he's challenged with the fact that He's living in a time where there's corrupt, corruption mm -hmm. and there's evil, but it seems like God is not doing anything about it. And because the people feel like that there's an absence of God, they are continuing to sin. And so what Habakkuk says is, hey, God, what's going on? When are you going to do something about these people and do something about the time in which we live in? And the Bible said God speaks to Habakkuk and said, write the vision. Make it plain that they may read it. And, run. and he said, though the vision tarry, you just wait on it, for it is yet for an appointed time. It shall surely come to pass. It shall speak and shall not lie. So, so this is the problem that we have in the time in which we live in. You seem very similar. We have people, very similar. And we have people who write the vision. We have people who read the vision. But we don't have people who run after the vision. For most people in our day, you know you need to lose weight, but you're not running to the gym. You know you need an education, but you're not running back to school. Our young people need help, but nobody's running to help them. 
And so the whole conference theme is to not just write it and read it. Let's do something about it. Let's change the life of our young people. Let's change the lives of our homes. Let's change how our marriage are going. Yeah. We need to run after it and pursue it. Wow. So it's looking forward to, like it's going to be a great conference. What's the date on that? Uh, July 31st through August the 1st of this year. That's Okay, where is it taking place? Let's let everybody know. It's going to be two locations. Uh, the day session is going to take place at 1534 Broadway, which is the New Creation Christian Church. Mm -hmm. And the night location will be 94 Lexington Avenue, which is Faith Pentecostal Mission, which is one of our fellowship churches. That's great. So everybody at the end of the program will let you know how you can get in contact with Bishop Wesley, reserve your spot, because this is going to be something you're going to want to be a part of, get more information. And it's not just good for young people, for everybody to benefit. Let, let everybody know what some insightful information you can get from this. Well, it is, it is a leadership conference. First and foremost, we need to understand that God created, created everybody to lead. Everybody's a leader. You might not be leading now, but there's certainly leadership qualities in you because God created every man in his image and after his likeness. We don't teach our young kids that they're leaders in the math class. No, we don't no. teach them that there's leaders in the science. We don't teach them. When we teach the principle of dominion, we teach grown man dominion, grown woman dominion. We don't teach that young man that he has dominion over biology. We don't no. teach the young lady that she has dominion over algebra. And so it is a leadership conference to equip us to perform our God-given destiny that he created us for in the first place, which is to rule and to reign in this earth. Wow, this is powerful material. I hope you all are definitely enjoying this. Now, you are married, and we we're talking about the First Lady of the Church and how you don't just list her as First Lady, you have her as co-pastor, which we said off-air, I said I really like that title that you, you gave to her. Tell us about that. Well, uh, we need to understand uh, the principles of God. Uh, it's called the law of first mention. There is a difference that we see, you know, in the very beginning when God created man, he created woman. The Bible said, God said, let us create man in our image and after our likeness and let them, not him, let them have dominion. The Bible says, so God created them both male and female. So when God called him, he called her. There you go. There's a difference between creation and formation. We were created at the same time in Genesis 1, 26, 27. But we were formed at different time in Genesis 2. Well, hold that thought. Yes. We'll be right back because I definitely want to go into that. And don't forget, market calendars. You know, the Father's Day is just a couple weeks away, guys. Sunday, June 15th. Join me at the Crystal Manor right on Flatbush for our annual Father's Day event. You can get tickets at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. Stay with us. I've got Bishop Wesley Knight right here on Beyond Focus TV. <laughs> Welcome back. You're watching Beyond Focus TV. I'm Lydia Patel, and I'm here with Bishop Wesley Knight of the NCCC Church. Bishop, right before we went to break, we were talking about formation, creation, how you have your wife listed as co-pastor. For those who are now joining us, why don't you recap that? Well, when God created man, he created, the word create means to bring into existence. Mm -hmm. And so God created man male and female, simultaneously. He formed them at different times. He forms Adam, and then at some point he puts Adam to sleep, takes out the rib, and he forms Eve, and brings the woman unto the man, 
And Adam responded, is now this is bones of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And so the thing is that when God called me, he called my wife. You notice, he says, and the two flesh shall be one. Yes, he did. So, so when God called me, he called her. The word co means to be joint. You know, there's a co-op. You know, you get in trouble. You have a co-defendant. Mm -hmm. It means to be joint. And so whatever me that God called me to do, he called us to do it together. One of the problems that we have, we have a chauvinistic spirit. Yes, we do. That runs rapid in the age and time in which we live in. And uh, that is not of God, you know. The hour and the day of the cute first lady who sits on the first pew with the big hat is over. It's over. As it should be. <laughs> because, well, you, you have to understand, if it takes a mother and father to raise natural children, then it takes a mother and father to raise spiritual children. That's a very good point, actually. When you bring it that way, it definitely is a good point. So I just wanted to commend that because that's something that you do and you look at your wife not only as equal in your personal life, but in your ministry and spiritual life, yes. you have her listed as that. As as a man of ministry, living in Brooklyn, you spent your whole life in Brooklyn, can you objectively take a step back and what do you think needs to be done in our communities right now in regarding the children? There's, there's a couple of different things, of course, but highlight for us a few things that you definitely see needs to be touched upon. One thing I, I know certainly needs to be touched upon, there need to be more programs that cater to our young people. There need to be more programs that cater to the family. I really think that the politicians and, and the various ones who are responsible for these programs or uh, helping to create these programs need to be in touch with people who are doing these things already. Now, mm -hmm. I, I'm, I'm not saying... You know, if you're not doing anything, we don't need to help you do more of nothing. But you really need to investigate who are trying to help their community because it's the church that's going to change lives in that community. And those communities are going to change our city. So we need more youth programs. We need more men mentoring programs. We I need agree. those. We need those. Our young men are just falling by the wayside. Uh, this gang activity uh, and, and we need more programs that's going to restructure the family because there is a major breakdown in the family, major breakdown. And let's elaborate on that breakdown because we are seeing, and we were talking about this off air, both of us grew up in a time where you had your church clothes, you had your church shoes, and you would get in trouble if you wore, you know, what you dare do when wearing your church clothes on, on a Tuesday afternoon or something like that. You're not supposed to do that. We were taught what was Reason and season. Right. Well, the Bible says in the book of Ecclesiastes that there's a time and a season to everything. Every purpose under the heaven. Well, we're the purpose because it says there's a time to be born, a time to die. Well, people are born and people die. So when those things are listed, it pertains to people. And so we have lost the, the connection of just trying to get people to understand that there are times and seasons to every purpose. As you mentioned... We had church clothes, we had school clothes, and we had play clothes. And your play clothes was not your church clothes, and your church clothes was not your school clothes. And the fear of your mother and father kept you in line where it is you knew which clothes to put on because you were not going to violate the order. That's, that's what's missing. The, the order, you know, we have parents, we have children who are raising children. And, and one major thing that is missing is the fear of God. If you didn't fear God, you fear the God in your parents. Absolutely. And so we, we're living in a time and a generation where it is people have gotten so far away from God. You know, the absence of God, you know, the Bible said that godliness is profitable unto all things. So anything that you extract God out of is going to depreciate in value. And this is what we're dealing with. But if we can get uh, the the fear of God back into this generation, then we can start setting order for the way it should go. What do you think we could restore that order, restore that fear? Uh, we need we need men and women of God who are not afraid to get their hands dirty. Uh, we need people who are concerned about people. 
You know, it used to be said it takes a village to raise a child. Mm -hmm. Well, the village stopped raising the children. Yeah. And when the village stopped, you know, there was a time you didn't do certain things because you know your neighbor was going to get you. And then when they told your parents. You still going to get it again. You were going to get it again. But we have parents today who defend their children even when they're wrong. And so when the, when the village stopped raising the children, the children start raising themselves. And the Bible said any child that left to raise themselves is a reproach to any nation. Very true. Very true. Before we get run, run out of time, I just want to make sure you have Bishop Knight's contact information. So tell us how we can get in contact with you, your Facebook page, all that good stuff. Well, we are located at 1534 Broadway, uh, Brooklyn, New York, 11221, in the heart of Bedford-Stuyvesant. Uh, the name of the church is the New Creation Christian Church. You can also uh, find us on Facebook at New Creation Christian Church. Our phone number is 718-573-9980. Bishop Wesley Knight, it's been a pleasure speaking to you this evening. So informative, and I hope you all definitely mark your calendars for July 31st through August 1st. Yes. That's the Kingdom Conference, but all that information is going to be on the Facebook page. And, of course, Father's Day is coming up on Sunday, June 15th. And get your tickets. We only have a very limited amount left. You can get them at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. I'm your host, Lydia Patel. Hope you enjoyed the program. And we'll be back again next week, same time, same place, for more Beyond Focus TV. Stay with us. Beyond Focus TV show wants and needs your feedback. Did we blunder? Please let us know so we can improve. Was the show helpful to you? Drop us a note so we can share the success with our staff members. Is there something you think we could do better? We welcome new ideas and new approaches to old ideas. Do you have a great suggestion? Let us know and we'll work on it. If you would like to share your comments anonymously, please send us an email at info at beyondfocusmedia.com. If you want to get in touch with the executive producer directly, send him an email at gene at beyondfocusmedia.com. We really look forward to hearing from you. Thank you.